Hello class, a very pleasant morning to all of you. Today, I, Rita Parekh from St. Thomas High School, Mahua, am here to further continue with the subject of social science for the students of class 8. My dear students, during the previous lecture, we started unit number 4, that is the Supreme Court. We saw the working of the Supreme Court and the introduction part of the chapter. We studied about the public interest litigation that how if the public is affected, a person or any uh, particular group of person can complain to the, in the Supreme Court in the, uh, in the interest of the public. And such litigation which is filed in the Supreme Court is considered as public interest litigation. So let's see the example which was given in your textbook. There was a protest against the increasing the height of Narbada Dam above 110 meters near Navagam. The environmentalist organization and NGOs from Madhya Pradesh and other regions were fighting for the rights of the tribal who would lose their land and habitat forever due to this project. Supreme Court passed a judgment on 8th March 2006 to resolve this conflict between the two states. It stated that in accordance with the rising population, it is necessary to carry out this project. So, the protest was held against uh, increasing the height of the Narmada Dam. You, you, also know, uh, you can also know the same as the Sardar Sarovar Dam, which was uh, the height of this project. The dam was more than 110 meters near Navagam. Environmentalists and organizations and the NGOs, that is non-government, non-profit organization or non-government organization, who are working in order to favor the people and provide more and provide more help to the people those who are in need. So those people from Madhya Pradesh and other regions were fighting that the project should not be conducted, as there are many tribal people who are residing over there, they lose their land and habitat if this project is carried on. So the Supreme Court passed a judgment on 8th of March 2006 that as the population is rising and it is very much necessary to carry out on this process project. There was a possibility of a positive development in environment and benefits to all the living beings due to Sardar Sarovar Yojra. The arid regions of Rajasthan, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh would get water and the expansion of desert could be kept in control. People rehabilitation of the tribals affected by this project should be given the top priority and hence their fundamental rights could be protected. So the judgment which was passed in that it was declared that it is very much necessary with the growing population to carry out this project and hence there are chances that various benefits might be availed to the people and all the living beings those who are uh, living near this area due to Sardar Sarovar Yojana. Many arid areas that means the dry areas of Rajasthan, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh will get water through this uh, yojana and the expansion of the desert could be kept in control. The people, those who were rehabilitated, that means those who have to change their places, uh, affected those who were affected by the uh, project and have to change their places, they will be given the top priority and hence by this the fundamental light, rights of this population can also be protected. Why is judiciary necessary? Imagine into a situation where a powerful person captures the land belonging to your family and you go to the court to get back the property but the system is such uh, that a powerful or the influential person can remove or transfer a judge from his or her post. In such a situation the judge would favor the powerful person only. So here an example is given, a situation is given in which it is stated that what if uh, a powerful or a political person comes and takes place your uh, house or your land which is belonging to you and your family. So it may happen that if we are going to the court and if the person is more powerful or influential, it may happen that if the judge is doing the right thing, if he is favoring us, then he may remove or transfer the judge from his or her post. So, it, in order to avoid such situation, 
the judge would always favor the powerful person only and hence the proper justice will not be delivered to us so if the judiciary is deprived of freedom if powerful or influential person can control the judiciary there will be no impartial judgment this is the reason why our constitution does not allow any such kind of interference and hence if the judiciary is deprived of freedom that means there is no freedom in judiciary then the powerful or the influential person will always control the judiciary and there will be no impartial judgment the judgment which is delivered uh, if the judiciary is not independent then it will be always be partial and it will always support the powerful people so that is why our constitution does not allow such interference that means that is the only reason that why judiciary is kept independent this is why judiciary has been kept independent from legislature and executive thus when the judges are once the judges are appointed in the high court or the supreme court it becomes very difficult to expel them from their respective positions and if an individual feels that his or her fundamental right is violated she can go to the court and this is the only reason that why the judiciary is kept independent and if a person feels that his or her rights are not uh, are not uh, properly delivered to them or they are violated or breached then he or she can go to court and no influential or the powerful person can change the judges of the supreme court and high court once they are appointed to their respective positions my dear students here we are at the end of today's video in the very next class we will further continue with the rest part of the chapter thank you and have a nice day